Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So how to optimize your Google shopping feed for winning products. A lot of people know how to scale winning products on Google ads. A lot of people know how to create winning product campaigns on Google, but not a lot of people really know how to scale those specific products via the shopping feed app because one of the most important things that you can change on your Shopify store or for that winning product is within the shopping feed app. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of a background, the shopping feed app is that specific app which basically pushes all of the products from your Shopify store onto the Google Merchant Center. And the beauty about this shopping feed app is that whatever changes you make on the shopping feed app itself related to the product do not get shown on your Shopify product page itself, but they only get shown to the people or your audience, whoever sees your shopping ads. And this makes it really, really easy to do optimizations and make those small tweaks which you need in order to find greater success with Google Ads. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the exact steps that I personally take on every single winning product to make sure that I can make that winning product last as long as possible and to also get as many sales as possible while it's selling. But without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing you'll have to do in order to find success with these optimization techniques is to destroy that like button down below. It'll take just two quick seconds. Okay, hopefully you have done that. But let's start off by talking about the specific hack related to the keywords. It's no secret that the keywords themselves are some of the most important things that you can have. In fact, I have this whole tutorial on just SEO keywords that you should be inserting within your Shopify product page. You should definitely check that video out after this one if you want a little bit more, more info on SEO techniques. But when it comes to keywords, you want to be testing around with the product title, the description, and the product type. I'll be going over all of these three specific details very soon directly on my shopping feed app. But what you want to be doing in order to really scale that product further is to get all of the keywords from your shopping campaign for that product or from your general testing campaign and basically use those keywords within the editing page of the shopping feed app. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? Well, let's go ahead and go on over to the shopping feed app and I have the shopping feed app open for one of my sample stores. But as you guys can see, when you go into the manage product section and when you go ahead and choose one specific product, you'll end up on this page right here, which is basically the page where you can directly edit all of the things which are right now submitted to the shopping feed app. Now, this is exactly what all of your customers, whoever sees the product on the shopping ads platform will see. Here is where you go in and edit all of the specific things and include those keywords, which are winning keywords for you. I normally don't do this right on the Shopify product page, especially if I have a very compact and small title because I really don't wanna make the title too big on my Shopify product page and end up making it look very unprofessional. So instead, I always come to the shopping feed app and do all of the changes related to the product title or description on this app. So the very first thing you'll of course have to do is basically look through your shopping ads campaign and see which keywords are getting you the sale. For instance, if you were selling a wireless printer, so let's go ahead and write that down, wireless printer, and you saw that this wireless printer on your Shopify store is selling very, very well, and you wanna take it a bit further. Your next step would be to go inside the shopping ads campaign for that product and note down any keyword which has over 500 impressions and has gotten you at least one sale. So let's say for example, the keyword red wireless printer was one of the keywords which got you multiple sales. Then what you would do is you would come over here to the shopping feed app and you would look for a place where you can insert the word red because you already have the keyword wireless printer. So you can do maybe wireless printer red or you can simply copy and paste this at the very front so it says red wireless printer. You want to basically go down the list and look at all of the keywords getting you sales and try to insert them here with in the title section and make sure that it's making sense in proper English. You do not want to do what is called st keyword stuffing where you simply write in one keyword and then you enter a comma and then write in the next keyword, which is a winning keyword. In this case, let's say for example, the keyword is small printer. So you shouldn't be doing something like this where you just simply type in that keyword and then write a comma and continue on. You want this to make sense in proper English because Along with Google's algorithm, you want to understand that real people will be reading this title. And if your title looks something like this, all jumbled up and doesn't really make sense, your CTR is going to suffer heavily in the long. So in order to really avoid that, you wanna kinda of make sure that your title is making sense. So in this case, instead of typing in small printer, maybe you can add the word small at the very front. So all it says is simply small red wireless printer. And this is a search engine optimized keyword right here because you use those keywords getting you sales from your Google Shopping Ads campaign 
and inserted them into the title section. So this will be what your customers start seeing now on the Google Shopping Ads platform, but whatever title you originally had on your Shopify product page, it will remain the absolute same. So this is one trick I do in order to really boost those sales with my shopping feed app. And I highly recommend you start doing this for all of your winning product. But of course, always make sure to record whatever change you made because this new change may not always work the best for you. So in the case that it doesn't work really as expected, you can simply revert back to the old change and continue selling that way. But this is one way to kind of optimize your shopping feed app. The next way is by simply adding the main keyword within the description section. So again, what you do is simply click this pen button right here and you'll see your description right here. You wanna go in and edit whatever section you wanna add your main SEO keywords, which are getting you the results and simply repeat the winning keyword up to three times. You do not wanna cross the three times mark because if you do it more than three times, there's a very high chance Google ads will mark your store as a spam store and it could lead to further bans and restrictions on your account, which is something you don't really wanna face. So what you wanna do is simply go through your description and wherever possible up to three times maximum, go ahead and enter the winning keyword. So in this case, I would simply type in small red wireless printer and make sure to repeat it three times throughout the description. It could be one time at the top, then one time in the middle, and then one time at the very end. You wanna kinda of sprinkle the main winning keyword throughout because remember, Google's algorithm reads from top to bottom, left to right. So as it's reading through, if it sees it repeated one time at the top, one time in the middle, and one time at the end, it will have a very clear idea of what exactly your product is and you have a very high chance of ranking for this main keyword. But that's another way to kind of further increase your sales with shopping ads by optimizing your shopping feed itself. But the third thing you wanna do is simply copy the main keyword or a fraction of the keyword. So in this case, instead of just copying the entire thing because we have already repeated it three times, I would just go ahead and take the keyword wireless printer because it clearly describes my product. Come down here to product type and simply enter that keyword in. So you can simply type in wireless printer just like that and press the green arrow and it will be saved to this specific product. What happens here is that once you save that as the product type, in a lot of the cases, when people are within the shopping section and scrolling through, on the left side of the product type could potentially pop up. And if it says wireless printer on the left side and somebody clicks on it, your listing will be most likely to pop up under that filter simply because you added wireless printer as one of the product types. And I've personally noticed that not a lot of people actually utilize the product type section. So in the case that you are the only one who ranks under this filter, you will be more likely to get a lot more sales compared to the normal person who really doesn't have any product type chosen. Remember, the more information you provide to Google and the feed itself, the better your results will be. So this is one way to really optimize your winning product and make sure to keep those sales coming in. But that is just one way, there's a lot more ways. Let's move on to the next way, which is choosing a vendor. So when it comes to specifically the vendor, you don't really have to do anything fancy. Simply type in your store name for that section. So if we scroll down just a little bit, we can see that right here, right now for vendor, it already says this sample store's name, but in your case, it should let you specifically specifically edit this section out just like it did with the product type and the other sections. But if it does not, simply add in your store's name for the vendor section directly on your Shopify product page. The main reason why I've started to do this is because it kind of gives off a professional feeling for your Shopify store because when you classify yourself as a vendor, meaning a brand, you're classifying your Shopify store as a real brand. And Google will rate you a little bit better than any other normal dropshipper who has not chosen this section. So it is really important in 2020 and onwards to choose this especially for those winning products. But in addition to that, you should also be doing the following when it comes to the Google product category, because that is the next most important thing. When it comes to the Google product category, you want to be choosing a specific category, which is two to three levels narrowed down. What do I mean by this exactly? Well, let's go back to our shopping feed app and scroll all the way down to the category section. Right now I have a specific category chosen, which is home and garden narrowed down to bathroom and accessories. As you can see, we're two levels down, but this could be taken down even further. For example, if I was selling something within the pet supplies niche and it was specifically a bird cage bird bath, I would not simply want to choose bird supplies here because I want to go down as narrowed as possible. So in this case, I would just go ahead and choose bird cage bird bath because it is as narrowed as possible. When you narrow this category section down, 
it really makes Google's task easier to find you the right audience so that you can continue getting those sales. So remember to always narrow down as much as possible, especially for those winning products. And I personally recommend doing this only for winning products. I really don't waste my time doing it for any other product. But another amazing way to continue scaling that product, let's move on to the next step, which is basically going inside specifically the detailed product characteristics section, as well as the product identifiers management section. So first of all, detailed product characteristics. If you scroll down, we can see that it is this section right here. What you want to be doing in this section is supplying information for those specific menus, which you can supply information for. So for instance, if the condition of this product is new, simply go ahead and choose that. It's not going to really harm you. In fact, it'll just makes Google's life easier when it comes to identifying your product. So simply choose new. If you're selling any type of gender related product, meaning a men's shirt or something, go ahead and choose male for gender. For age group, if you're selling something related to the kids specifically, you would want to come in and make sure to choose kids and you can kind of go further into this section right here maybe with size system unit pricing measure etc the more information you give to google the better your products will perform normally if i have a winning product which is within the fashion niche i'll simply come in here and choose maybe the size system i'll give it a size type in fact i'll keep on going until i have the unit pricing measure or the unit pricing base measure covered as well because again the more information we provide the better it is for getting results the next section is the product identifiers management section normally for winning products i recommend that you choose this circle right here which is submit product as custom product we want to be submitting our products as custom products simply because we don't sell products which are real branded products we don't have an mpn or sku for that product and we don't have any types of barcodes related to that product so sometimes what i've seen is that google may kind of disapprove that product if it finds for whatever reason if for example it wants some kind of barcode or something just because this first option was chosen and when it happens to winning products it's really bad because then your entire optimization is pretty much screwed and it could potentially just kill the product so in order to kind of avoid that right when a product starts to sell really well simply choose this last option right here which is the best way to go but along with that you should also be using the promotions feed in order to further increase your results now the promotions feed if you scroll all the way to the top can be found right here if you click on it the promotions feed is basically the program where Google lets you basically provide some kind of coupon code, which will then be shown to the customers directly on the shopping ads platform. Sometimes if you're simply scrolling through, you'll see that it says 5% off or 10% off on the Google ad itself. This program lets you do exactly that. So what you want to do is under the promotions feed section, simply scroll down and under manage promotions, go ahead and click add new promotion. Once you click on that, you'll be taken to this page right here. You can enter a title for the specific promotion. You can say something like 5% off summer sale or 10% off winter sale, etc. Give it a specific name because if the name is not specific enough, your promotion will not be accepted. In addition, you can choose whatever product you want the promotion to apply to, or you can choose a specific product. Offer type, you can type a generic code or just provide no code at all and just let Google do its thing, which simply means that the promotion is already active. For the promotion's effective dates, you can start the promotion on any given date. I normally just like to enter an end date because I don't want the promotion running forever, especially if it's a season-related promotion because I want the summer discount code to end when summer is over. In addition to that, you can kind of supply a minimum purchase amount. I normally don't do that because I already offer free shipping on all orders over $50 on my own stores. But if you don't really do anything like that, you can definitely offer a minimum purchase amount to incentivize the customer to purchase more. But once you have filled out all of the details that are applicable, go ahead and click add to feed. It'll go through an approval process. And once it's approved, it will start showing directly on the shopping ads platform for your products. But a perfect way to kind of be just scaling the product further, because not only does this let you stand out of the crowd, because not everybody uses this, but it also incentivizes the person or the potential customer to come in and buy from your store. But in addition to that, there's one more trick, which is not really on the shopping feed app itself, but rather on the merchant center. But for the promotions feed, I like to do normally anywhere between 3% off to 7% off. I like to keep the numbers random just to make my store stand out of the crowd. But on the merchant center within the product feed itself, you have the ability to add a special code which will basically append your store name at the end of every title. So for instance, if your store name is best seller and you sell the product wireless printer, if you add this specific code name, which I'm about to go over, every time any type of product from your store appears on the Google Shopping Network, for example, the wireless printer, it would say something like this, wireless printer at the front, followed by this little line, followed by your store name. So it would say best seller at the very end. 
The reason why this is such a powerful hack nowadays is because if you notice some of the big stores such as Inspire Uplift, they're constantly using this technique on their shopping ads. And not only does this let you stand out of the crowd, but it's kind of supplying a brand name to your products. And when customers see a brand name associated with any product, it is psychologically automatically going to put your product and your store at a much higher level than some random dropshipper trying to sell that same exact product. So this is the specific code which you want to be adding. So let's go ahead and go on to the Merchant Center for the sample store and show you guys exactly what you need to be doing. So under the product section, you want to be going to the feed section and within the feeds, you should have the feed that is already connected to your Merchant Center. Make sure this feed is the right one and working properly. Once you identify that your feed is indeed working properly, go ahead and click on the feed and once you get to this specific page, go ahead and click on feed rules. This is where we'll be adding that specific rule, which I have outlined on the Google Doc. You want to come down here and you want to click the plus button right here. Once you click the plus button, these are the two specific options you will see. You want to go under the processed attributes section. From here, scroll all the way down until you can identify title. You want to go ahead and click on that. And once you click on that, you'll be taken to this specific page. So once you're on this specific page, here's what you want to do. You want to scroll all the way down until you see modifications. So what you want to do within this section, simply click this filters button right here and go ahead and type in title because we will be changing the title code. And once you type in title, make sure to click on this to change it to does not contain. What you will be doing here is you'll be simply adding in this little line, which can be found right above the enter button. And then after the line, simply type in your store name. So in this case, for example, our store name is bestseller. So we would type in bestseller. And once you do that, simply hit enter. And that's all you have to do within that section. Once you have done that, scroll down to the append button, go ahead and click on append. And now you want to type in exactly the same thing, which is the line followed by your store name. So bestseller and simply click enter. And that's all you have to do. Simply click OK and you'll be good to go. What will happen from now on is that anytime your product title itself does not contain this text right here, which is the line followed by best your store name, it will go ahead and append it at the very end, meaning add it at the very end. And this will happen for all of your products automatically. So you don't have to do it one by one manually. And again, this will kind of add a little bit of a trust factor to your products. And if somebody is searching for your brand name itself, this will allow your brand to rank first in case that somebody else is competing with your brand or has a similar name to your brand. But a perfect way to kind of help add more sales to whatever sales you're already getting with your winning product. But this was my list on how to optimize your Google shopping feed as well as a merchant center trick for those winning products. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.